Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans, back for Tuts Plus. And in this session we're going to be covering, well you've probably already guessed, vintage compression. Well, virtual vintage compression at least. And uh, you might have also guessed that one of the models we'll be looking at is the LA-2A. It's because I've got uh, this 720 screen filled full of uh, native and DSP versions of the uh, LA-2A. And there was a time when I probably would have stayed away from covering vintage compression um, as a whole in the digital domain. That's really because a few years ago, only a few years ago really, um, things like the LA-2A and the 1176, which is another model we're going to look at, a popular model, um, were really only available in DSP for people with you know, Pro Tools HD or UAD systems. And although I'm a UAD user, I didn't really feel it was fair to start covering stuff that you know, most people may not have or you know may not be able to get hold of but now the LA2A has been modeled by you know just a lot of people because it's such a workhorse effect in pro big pro studios the LA2A and the 1176 are two compressors that most mix engineers turn to along with say a Pultec EQ um, an SSL bus compressor these are things that people just reach for you know um, in every session so then being introduced in the digital world um, has, it means that people can work inside the box and produce really pro, you know, pro sounding uh, tracks and, and projects. So I think it's important to understand how these tools work. And it's important to have a model of them, to be honest, for the price, you know. I mean, the price of, for instance, the Softube version, um, I can't give you the exact prices off the top of my head, but you know, you're probably looking at like 150 euros or something like this for some of these. The Wave, Waves one is really reasonably priced, and this is an IK Multimedia one, um, part of T-Rax. And then I've got my favourite, which is the UAD. So if you do own a UAD platform, I would suggest getting these new, uh, the new version of their LA2A um, suite or whatever it's called. And uh, also, if you're a Reason user, there's a Cakewalk version of the LA2A built into Reason, and I'm pretty sure other DAWs have it as well now. Now, just to give you a bit of background, here's a picture of the original LA2A, and you can see that they've, you know, this from this specific era, this one, the LA2A Silver, um, is is a really good uh, visual model at least, but it's also a very good, um, you know, audio model or component model. They've really spent their time getting it right. It's a tube compressor, so it's, it sounds warm. Um, and to be honest, they're, you know, they're very expensive to buy. And that's because they impart a great sound to pretty much any program material. You'll notice that there's few controls here. There's realistically um, three controls. The rest of it is sort of operational stuff to the right here. This decides what the meter does. And this is on and off. But these, these controls... The emphasis I'm not going to cover because that's not on every model, um, but we've got limit and compression, so that really changes the ratio. Um, and then we've got a gain control and a peak reduction control. The gain control is really the level going in and out of the unit, and the peak reduction is really how much compression is occurring. So you can see that this is a very simple unit. This works extremely well with softer program material. So what do I mean by softer? Well, you know, organic transients. So really things like pianos, strings, um, you know, uh, real instruments, probably guitar is going to work very well, but the really, the real shining star, uh, you know, of the LA-2A is its treatment on vocals. Uh, it, it's pretty famous for, for treating vocals and a lot of pro producers have this as part of their vocal chain. So if you've got a good preamp or you've got a good mic, um, and you feed it into some good converters and then you put a model of this on it, you know, th this will actually transform a vocal. I've got a vocal here um, that ha hasn't got... Well, I'll turn everything off. Higher to your heart I need you Lift me higher Okay, so that's that bit cycled. It's very dry, as you can hear. I've deliberately turned everything off. Um, now, I put a bit of Pultec EQ on here. Um, it's actually the Pultec Cut. So just really just a, like a low cut and put some reverb on as well. But before I do that, I want to just show you the difference that an LA-2A can make. It's a pretty well recorded vocal. I found that there's you know a bit of saturation in there, but the LA-2A can pretty much rescue most situations. It's sort of plug and play. 
Lift me Let's higher here. to yourself. Pull me closer to your truth. Lift me higher to your heart. I need you. Now this is gain reduction here. And if you're, you know, pretty seasoned and you've used a lot of digital compressor models, Minus 10 dB is a lot of compression. And generally, um, when you compress minus 10, you hear some pretty nasty artifacts. When it comes to the model of the LA2S, LA2A, especially this one, you're able to push the gain reduction even up to minus 20, and you get this, uh, you get the, the subtleties of the vocal come right out, and you really don't get any nasty side effects. Um, I've got the peak reduction right up there, but let's turn it down a touch. And turn the gain up a little Lift bit. me higher to yourself. Pull me closer to your true. And I'll switch it off here. Lift me higher to your Now I don't want to confuse you with level and you thinking loud is better. So let's turn the gain down and try and match the levels a little. Lift me higher to yourself. Pull me closer to your truth. So that's in. Lifts me higher to and your out. heart. I need you. Lift me higher to yourself. Pull me closer to your truth. Lifts me higher to your heart. So it just warms it up. It brings out the subtleties. It fills in the gaps. Um, it even brings out the articulation for me. Um, you know, without the need for a de uh, and without it becoming hyped. So this is why it's so popular. It's, it's very a very easy going compressor. If you want a, you know more extreme effects, you can turn the gain up. You can drive more gain through the unit. Turn it onto limit and turn the peak reduction up. Lift me higher to yourself. Pull me closer to your truth. Lifts me higher to your heart. So obviously it does start to get quite intense, but even at that minus 20, compared to some other compressors, it's still pleasant to listen to. So this is where the LA2A really shines. So no matter what model you're using, you're going to get a similar sound and you're going to get, you know, similar controls. I mean, let's take a look at the, um, the Waves one, for example. Very similar controls, compress limit. You know, the compress limit's the other way round, but that's about the only difference. They like to put some, uh, some noise in. I turn that off. Uh, but this, the, the display, you know, controls here are exactly the same peak reduction and gain the metering is basically the same um, and again let's look at the soft tube version slightly different they've got a mix control which is nice um, but uh, you can also turn into turn some side chain gain in here and you can detect some high high it's got a high pass detection circuit but essentially limit and compression gain peak reduction uh, and metering controls down here. So when you start to move between models, you'll quickly understand how they've modeled it and where they've moved the controls to, but you do get very similar results. So let's have a look at the 1176, and just keep in mind that the LA2A is something you should really have in your palette, something you should have um, and you should really use. Um, the 1176 is an opto compressor, so it's a little faster and can be more aggressive. Um, I'm just going to put it on some drums here. This is an 1176. So, a little bit of a different animal and more controls, but still, compared to some digital models, pretty simple stuff. Um, and the real trick behind this one is driving input into the unit. Input gain. And this is what changes the amount of gain reduction here. You know, we've got a peak reduction control in the LA-2A. The way that the 1176 works is if you drive more gain into the circuit, you're going to see more reduction. Then you control the amount of reduction using the ratio. So we can have higher ratios and we're going to get more intense effects. 
We've also got attack and release control. Now what I like to do with drums is, you know, you can turn the release down and you can get some sort of pumping effects. Now if you start to turn the input gain of the 1176 up, you can actually get some saturation. But, but again, we're bringing out the nuances, the, the subtleties here. Now one trick is that you can obviously go right up the ratio ladder here and you can create more intense effects and we can see we're getting minus 20 db and beyond and it's still sounding good and again this is not really something you can you can really do um with a standard digital model it's going to sound pretty nasty but there was a trick with the original unit where you could click all buttons in and this is called brit mode and i just hit shift there but pretty much all of your 1176 models and let's just look at an alternative by the way um let's look at the native instruments 1176 uh, there you go. And again, they've changed the graphics. They've changed the way it looks. By the way, here's one in real life. This is what they look like. Uh, the Universal Audio one there is one version of it. Uh, they, they were called Blackface, Silverface. They, they had at different times different names, but they're essentially the same, the same design, slightly different internals. Um, and then, you know, Waves do one as well. Um, CLA76. So you can see that we've got similar similarities between all of them. And these are also modeled in, in you know, some DAWs as well. So you will be able to get your hands on them. Um, but going back to what we were talking about, the Brit mode is when you push all buttons in at once. And in other models, like the Waves one, there'll be an all button. And you can see that that essentially does the same thing. But in the um, UAD version, you just hit shift and you can get them all pushed in. We get some pretty crazy effects. <laughs> I mean, it's a creative effect, but this is hard driven. And I'm gonna bypass it. Okay. And with it switched on, we're getting harmonics and sounds that <laughs> aren't even there in the original. And I really like this. So if you were to use a parallel bus, you could put this behind it. Try changing the attack and release to extreme amounts as well. It brings out the sustain of certain sounds. It brings out effects. I mean, obviously this is incredibly hot. Um, I've got a limiter on the master output so your ears don't explode. <laughs> but um, you need to watch these levels and you can change the output level of the 76 even if you're driving it very very hard this output level by the way won't affect um the amount of reduction that you're you know um, treating the sound with cool let's go again extreme and this is very different to say even you know the higher ratios so there you go, the 1176 and the LA-2A. The 1176, I love for drums. Put, try it on your drum bus, try it on your master, try it on parallel buses for extreme effects. Um, it also works really well on fast guitars and vocals as well, because obviously you can change the attack and the release here, so you can really customise the settings. The LA-2A, much more of an organic beast. I'm not saying it doesn't work on drums, because it certainly does, but it, it, it's going to work better on those slower transients and those more undulating sounds. And I find vocals, uh, you know, the LA-2A is almost indispensable. So grab these two, no matter what models you get, just beg, steal or borrow, get hold of an LA-2A and an 1176 because it's something that you will need to um, go back to time and time again. I'm going to do another tutorial uh, or at least another overview of uh, Vintage EQ and show you a couple of essential models that I think that you should have in your collection um, that are great for sort of... Um, you know, adding character and tone to specific sounds. I hope this has been useful. If you've got any suggestions, as always, put them in the comments and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.